Good. Super good. Ready to go when that is? It's, it's, it's coming up. Oh, wonderful. The, the doctor is not only a doctor, he also fixes the, uh, the iPhone. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Rabbi Kutman Akiva Kovacs, again, back for another installment of Hulin, filling in for Rabbi Silver at APAC. And today's daf is Kuf Yud Tes 119. And we've actually started 119, but I have to be Choser Bichuva. The reason I'm Choser Bichuva is because I didn't understand the last topic we were covering. And so I'm going to explain it to you again now that I actually read the Rashis and understand it. This shows you how important it is to read the Rashis. You know, when, when we have the ability, you know, and, and Daf Yomi, we're, we, are, we are flying through Shas, so it's hard to understand everything, but we need to understand these concepts because this will become Halacha Lemaisa. So our last, I'm speaking to you outside, and then I'll go back inside, and I'll tell you what I did wrong, and I'll fix it up so you understand it, so you're going to know what to do when it, this becomes Halacha Lemaisa. Yesterday, we had a <laughs> machlokis about the Yad and the Shomer. Now, remember, a Yad is a handle or something you use to handle the food. And the shomer is something like the shell or the peel or the hide that protects the food. Now, Rav told us that there's no yad, ain yad lefachos me kezayis. If you have less than a kezayis of actual food stuff, the halacha of yad doesn't apply. So even if that half a kezayis or this less than a kezayis is on the end of a chicken drumstick, that bone does not serve as a yad. And he told us, ain shomer lefachos me and there's no shomer for less than a bean. A foal is sort of a, a large bean. Maybe it's a lima bean. I don't know the exact translation. So if that has a shell or a, a pot around it, if it's less than that size, there's no halacha of a shomer. And the shomer would bring in and out tuma and mitzaref, as we learned yesterday. The yad, the bone, or the handle might bring tuma in or out, but it's not going to be mitzaref with the food itself. So we brought a barisa yesterday, which is really... It's an amazing case. We had two bones, and these bones have less, have a chatzi zayas each of meat on these bones. And what happened is he put the bone end into a building or under a tent. It's got, it got its nose in under the tent, as they say, Rabbi Isai. And if you have tuma under a tent, it makes an ohel. Adam hi yamus ohel. And these are human bones, Rabbi Isai. So I really don't know what they're doing with two human bones with a little bit of basar, but that's what they're doing. And there's a machlokis there if that makes this building tame as an ohel or not. If these half zesim on these bones will join up and the bone end without the meat is the only end in the tent, if that's going to be enough that this bone will serve to bring the tuma into the tent. So now I'm going to pick up right here at the very top of Kufya Test 119A1. Rav ha- <laughs> Wonderful question. If you have rove minion or rove binion, that means the majority of the size of the human skeleton or the majority of the number of human bones, that will be metame. But a kazai, you only need a kazayas basar, minimes, to be metame and ohel, but the bones you need rove minion or rove binion. There's a, there's a whole gemara where they counted the bones to, to figure that out. So rav hai bim, just Yeah, just kazayas of flesh. Rav hai b'may okimla. So Rav, what does he do with this? Tosaf points out this is not a kasha. We're just asking Rav to explain himself in comparison to this brisa about the two bones making two mas ohel. So what does Rav do? So let's see where I went wrong, Rav. Ibi yad, if he holds the bone is a yad, kasha reisha. Because in the reisha, we said the bias is tame, even though there's half a zayas of basar on the bone. Ibi shomer, and if the bone is a shomer, Kasha Seifa. And the Seifa, we're talking about Yehuda ben Nakusa, says it's not Tame. But if there's half a Zayas, that's bigger than a pole. That's bigger than a bean. A bean is something smaller than half a Zayas. So if the bone is serving as a Shomer, then it should be Tame for Rav. So how would he explain the Seifa? Now here's where I went wrong, Rabbi. Say, I was racing through this. I wasn't thinking, a bone is a Shomer? How could a bone be a Shomer, Rabbi? Say, Isn't a bone always a handle? Any ideas? Anyone read the Rashi? Anyone read ahead? So Rashi says... Shkoyach, the, the doctor. No, from the last row and from the standing room only in the back, we have an answer. Thank you, doctor. So Rashi says, Kigon be'etzamos sheyesh bahen moach. Moach means brain, moach means bone marrow. 
and he puts the empty end of the bone into the house, but the other end of this bone has marrow in it, has half a kazais of marrow. So this bone is not a handle here, it's a shomer. And the shomer is even better, it can be mitzaref with the food inside to bring in tuma and to join for the shear of tuma. So the marrow is the meat we're talking about in this bone, if you establish this bone as being the shomer. And for a shomer, Rav only needs a kaful, only a bean size. <coughs> so Ibai same of a shomer, Ibai same of a yad. Rav can tell you the bone is serving as a shomer because it's marrow, or it's serving as a yad because it's regular muscle tissue on the other end of this meat. Ibai same of a yad, huda amar ki huda ben nekusa. So if he tells you it's a yad, so he holds like Yehuda ben Nekusa, it's, it's not tame because Rav needs a shear of kezais of actual food for the din of yados, for the handles. The Ibai is Ema Bishomer, or he says it's a Shomer, who's a market Kama, and he holds like the Tanakama that he only needs a Kaful for a Shomer, Rav needs a Kaful for a Shomer. So this half a Zayas is bigger than a Kaful, it's bigger than a bean, so it would work to bring Tuma into the house, and he could paskin like the Tanakama, the Rabbanu who say Tame. Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi, remember yesterday, Rabbi Yochanan disagreed with Rav, he says you don't need a Shir, he says any size of food is enough to have a yad or to have a shomer. The whole thing could be a yad, and half a zayis is enough for him. And he says the house would be tame. Wonderful. This is important because we're actually going to get the same baraisa on Ahmed Beis, so I'm really glad that I was Hoser B'tshuva, and I read the Rashi, and I explained it like the Rashi. Tashima. Rabbi Yehuda Omer Kulis. Sheyesh alea kezai. So what's a kulis? It's a thigh bone, Rabosai. It's the top bone in the thigh. And Rashi gives us sort of a preview of coming attractions. He says, there's mach in it tamid. Bo mach tamid. There's, there's always some marrow in the kulis. So he has this thigh bone, and it has a kezaius of basar. Gureris kula latuma. It drags the whole bone down to tuma, which means now this whole bone can become tame, can give off tuma and take in tuma for the meat because it has a kazayas of meat. Acherim omrim, acherim is usually Rebbe Meir, but they disagree with Rebbe Yehuda. They say, afilu enalea ele kaful, even if it's less than a kazayas, if it's a kaful. Goreris kula latuma. So this kaful, it sounds a lot like Rav Shita, that you need a kaful, at least for a shomer. So what's going on here? Rav hai b'may mukim la, again, how would Rav explain this to be consistent with his opinion that you need a kazayas for a yad, you need a kaful, to invoke the halach of Shomer. Ibiyad, if this bone is a yad, kasha seifa. So then the seifa, which would be a cheri momrim, Rabbi Meir, he would have a problem with, because he doesn't need a kaful. Ib is Shomer, and if it's a Shomer, kasha resha. And if it's a Shomer, Rav only needs a foal, a bean size, to start it, start you off with a Shomer. So he would say, you don't need a kazayas like the resha, like Rabbi Yehuda. So he could, he could explain it either way. Ibi, same a biyad, you could say the bone is a handle, uh, and he holds like Rabbi Yehuda who says Kezayis. He buys same of a Shomer. Or you could say the bone is a Shomer and we're talking about the marrow. Uh, and he holds like Rabbi Meir, a Cherim, who says a bean because that's consistent with Rav who says if you have a bean of actual food, you can have the halacha of a Shomer. Rabbi Yochanan, Amar, and Rabbi Yochanan doesn't need a shear. Any size food is enough to have a Yad or a Shomer. He says Kula B'Shomer. The whole thing is talking about a Shomer. Behud Amar Kecherim. And he holds like Rebbe Meir. Now that's that's going to give us pause. Acherim, Gemara says, ha kaful ka amre. For Rebbe Meir, the Acherim, they say kaful. They say you need at least a bean. Now Rebbe Yochanan, we learned yesterday at the end of the daf, when we were racing along, he says you don't need any size. He says any size is enough to have a yad or a shomer. So here the the b'risa we're bringing says you need a bean. Rebbe Yochanan is going to explain. He says, I d since since Rabbi Yehuda, who's the first Tana in this teaching, he says a shiurika amre, he says a shir, he says you need a kezayis to invoke the halacha of yad. In hunami shiura amar. So a cherim, Rabbi Meir, also says you need a shir. So he's saying really it's a stylistic reason that a cherim is saying he needs a kaful to, to, uh, of actual flesh or actual marrow in this bone. Mm -hmm. But really, he would need even less than that. Rashi says, nami amre. He would even say the same halacha applies if you have less than a full size, less than a bean size, which would be consistent with Rabbi Yochanan, who said, Kolshahu, any amount of actual food can have a yad or a shomer. Rava, Daika, Rava looked into this carefully. 
Daikonami de Bishomer's Kenan. He says, if you look carefully, you're also going to see that we're dealing with a Shomer. Dikatane Kulis, because it says a Kulis. The Kulis is the thigh bone, is the, the, the Etzemelion Shel Yerech at Shmamina. So learn from here, you're dealing with a Shomer, and we're talking about a Kulis, which has marrow. The Rashi says, Stam Kulis Yesh Ba Moach. And he also told us it has Moach Tamid. So Rashi is very much into marrow. I suspect, since he repeated this, that Rashi was a fan of eating kulis in his cholent with the bone marrow. So Shmami Na, if you need bone marrow, get a kulis. Get that, get that bone, not just an stop. Itmar, we learned, we said, Rebbe Hanina Amar Zehu Shir. He says, this is the shir, kefol. He says about our baraisa, when acherim say kefol, he says, that's the shir you need for, for a shomer. Rebbe Yochanan Amar Ein. Wonderful, wonderful concept to review because we've dived into it. Yesterday we talked about the Yad and the Shomer. The yad is a handle. A Shomer is anything that protects the food. And the Halacha is, if you, I'll give you an example, the peel, the klipa around a beitza on an egg or the peel around an orange. Or in some, sometimes it would be the hide on a meat. But we saw for a nevela we don't say a Shomer, but for food we do. So any peel, you know, the, the shell on a walnut, for example. So a handle is something you're going to pick it up with. Okay. So if, you had, if, you, if you're eating a drumstick of a, of a chicken and one end is just bone without flesh and the other end is the flesh, so that bone is going to be your handle, your yad. The nafkamin is it brings in and puts out tuma. If this, if this food is, is tahor, it can become tame just touching the bone if it's the right size. Then the bone, the bone might join to the size if it's a shomer. So the, the, which is more strict, the shomer the yad? So it depends what you mean by strict, but the, the shomer can join with the food itself. The yad doesn't always join with the food itself. We saw by Nevela it doesn't. The shomer will join with the food to get to the kibetza that this food can now make other things tame. Rashi says a kazayas can be, food can become tame. The Torah says say it needs kibetza to become tame and to give off tuma. So we're worried about if it's the right size. So as a nafgamina, when we have a base of mikdash, you want to eat kodshim, which is, God willing, very soon, because we know APAC's working on this right now, God willing, that if you have a piece of tamay food, but it's smaller than kibetza, and it touches your tar food, you're still okay if it touches your kodshim. But if it's the right size, and that chicken rolls over and hits your, your kodshim, you've got a problem. Now that kodshim is, is tamay, and you can't eat it anymore. It'd be an avera. Good. So Rabbi Yochanan says, Ein zeshir. Ein zeshir So Achari, Rabbi Meir said, it's kifol to have the halacha of a shomer, that you need a full of actual food, and the, the shomer would be bigger on top of that. So Rabbi Yochanan explains, like we said before, I did to come our Tanakama shiura, since the Tanakama Rabbi Huda said a share of kazais, kamre in hu nami shiura. So Rabbi Meir, we call a cherim, says also a shir, but he doesn't really mean it davka. Rashi said he doesn't mean davka, even less than that. He's just being stylistic. We, we have this in the Mishnah sometimes, we have the Lashon Aidi to Tana Reisha, Tane Nami Seifa. The Seifa is, doesn't have to be exactly like that halachically, but since they taught up here in this style, they teach down here in the same style. So we see that the, the style was important. And they would memorize the Mishnayos, and it would be easier, it would flow better, because they, they didn't have it written down. They didn't have art scroll, they had it in their brain. So they had to have it in a, in a style that they could fit in their brain better. Tashima. Come in here, Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah, Metaher Beshel Pol, Metame Beshel Kitnis. This is a Mishnah in Uxin, and it's talking apparently about the pea pods. So, the pea po the certain pods, now pea pods might be a bad example because you could eat the pod, but certain beans, a lot of beans, lentils, things like this, they come in a pod. And this pod, you could have it be a shomer, it's protecting the seeds or the peas inside. Or it could be a yad that you're moving it, moving around the peas using this pea pod. So Rabbi Elazar ben Azaria, he is metacher b'shel pol. He says the case, the um, the pea pod. It's not really a pea here, but the pod we'll call it uh, by the by the large bean is tahor. And Rashi explains based on the Mishnah over there in Uksin. We're not going to pull out on Uksin right now. That's uh, that'll be your homework, or I say. But so he says, uh, Shomer shall pull to love Shomer who. It's not a real Shomer, the pea pod of the pole of the large beans. Kagan osen sharvitim. So it's interesting, sharvitim is a hav we just had, but these sharvitim means a, a pod or a case. 
Shepulin gedelim behen, that the large beans grow in them. He says it's a it's a kosht belaz. So I, I, my French is very rusty, but that's what it's called. Why why is it not a shomer? And therefore, it's tahor. It doesn't uh, join with the food inside for tuma. Mipnei shepulin gosin. These beans are large. Ve'en tzrichin l'shomer. They don't even need a shomer. Denoach l'shamshan. It's easy to pick them up. L'nakron, or to clean them off. So these large beans, if they get some schmutz in them, it's easy enough to, to rinse them off or wipe them off, and it's easy to handle these large beans one at a time. I think they're the size of lima beans. I've got to look into it. Lefichach, this is in Rashi still, Lefichach, ein shomer ze machnisu motzi mitzdorf. So there's this pea pod for the large beans doesn't bring tuma in or out and doesn't join with the peas, the beans inside, for the shear of kibetza for tuma, kishar shomrim. So it doesn't act like other shomrim because Rabbi Elizur ben Azari says you really, you don't need it. And he contrasts this, metame bishel kitnis. But the one for kitnis is metame. Rashi says the shomer who, it's really a shomer, the dokim hen. The kitnis are very small. He might be referring to lentils or something similar. You know, kitnis and, and Pesach we include all sorts of things. Na nowadays, they include even peanuts. They, uh, Ashkenazim include rice. Mm -hmm. It's similar. It's, uh, the kitnis was in the same bags with wheat, so was the rice. So that's the chashash. So it, it's, it's a much smaller seed. The food itself is much smaller than the pole. It's a very small. You can imagine lentils. Some lentils are very small. Dedakim uh, hen. This is in the Rashi. Ve'en yecholin nakran. It, it's hard to clean them out. If they get some schmutz, they get some dirt in with your, your kitnis, they're very small and they're hard to clean. So it's good for him that they stay in these pods. Uh, so they're not going to get mixed up with chaff or with dirt, and it's easier to carry them to move them around and to have them protected in their pods. So that's why he says they're tame, meaning they can get tuma, they can give tuma, they're a shomer. So what, what's the reason he gives in the Mishnah? He wants to handle them in their pod. So they're going to stay clean. They're not, they're not going to be uh, getting everywhere. So Rav Acha Rav says, maybe we're not dealing with the pod as a shomer. He says, we're actually dealing with the stem. We're not dealing with the pea pods exactly, but the stem that holds the pea pods. Umishim yad, and it's actually serving as a yad to make it easy for him to handle all the peas. Because you could pick up one pea pod and you get a few peas, or you could pick up the stem that's got ten pea pods, and all of a sudden you've got a hundred peas. That's even better. Achanami bekucha. So here too, you could be dealing with a stem, not necessarily with a shomer. Umishim yad, and the stem would be a yad, would be a handle used to pick up all of these pea pods. So what does he mean when he uses the word mashmishan, which is mashmesh? is to handle something, to touch something. But tashmishan, so really it's using it. Tashmish is using, mashmish is handling. They're very similar verbs. But the tashmishan, so he's using the stem to pick up all of his pea pods with all of his uh, kidneys inside. Tashma. So come in here, the ton of the baby Shmael. We learned from the baby Shmael, we had this rabosai on Sunday, very famous drusha. It says, "All kol zera zerua asher yezere." When we're talking about seeds that become tame, talking about a piece of tuma falls on these seeds, so we say we say they are zera zerua seeds that you plant asher yezere in the manner that you plant them. And we said over there that means with the klipa, with the shomer, with the bran on the seeds. Kederach shabnei adam motzin, the way people take them out to plant them. Chita, a wheat seed, beklipasa, in the bran. Sora, beklipasa, a barley seed in its bran. Adoshim, and adoshim, little lentils, beklipasa, in, in their shell. So lentils are very small, Rebose. So it seems now we have a proof, because Rav said there's no shomer less than a pole. So a pole could be about the size of a lima bean, and a lentil is obviously much smaller. Now you'll go home, and you'll get out your lima bean, and you'll get out your lentil, and you'll see the lentil is probably one-fifth or one-tenth of a lima bean, depending how big all your your species are. So what's going on that even a tiny little lentil is going to have a shomer that's not like Rav who says you need at least a bean size. So you say bria shiny. So depending which yeshiva you go to, this is a birya or a bria. It's a, it's a bet resh yud and then a hay, whatever it is. But it is an item that was created in this manner. It's a complete item. They use the example of a pomegranate seed is a one whole item or you know, it's something that was created in this size. So even though the, these adashim are very small, these lentils, these kidneys are very, very small, but they are created as a whole item.
they're not cut in half. Now we saw this before that a, a bria, birya is ena betela. If it's something tame, or it's something not kosher, and it falls into the cholent, there's a big problem because it's a bria, it's not bottle, because it has chashu, because it was created like this. So this is the famous, the fly in the soup. So a fly is very small. So a fly falling into your bowl of soup, even if your bowl of soup is very hot, the fly is not noten tam, it doesn't give a taste into your soup because it's less than 60 of your soup, unless your soup is very tiny and your fly is very large, in which case you need to call Brody Brothers and get rid of those things. But a stam of fly is not very big. A stam of soup is more than 60 times the fly, but what's the problem? You need to take the fly out, Rabosai. Well, first of all, altashak, so it's disgusting. Second of all, it's a, it's a birya. If somebody, God forbid, eats it, he's, uh, he's over a lot of mal malchus. So Rabbi Heinemann is going to come and give him a lot of malchus. So you take it out because it's a birya. It's not bottle. It would not be bottle in the soup, even though it's less than 1 in 60. You've got to take it out. So good. So by Rav Oshia, Rav Oshia asks, turning over to Ahmed Base 119b, he says, Shnei Shomrim, two protectors, two shells, Mahu Shayit Starfu. Is it possible they can join together? Echidami, what are you talking about, Rav Oshia? Ilema Bezeil Gavze, you're talking about one shell on another shell, one Shomer on another Shomer, you're talking about an overcoat on top of a jacket? Mi ika shomer al gav shomer. Is there such a halacha of a shomer on top of a shomer? Hatnan, we have a Mishnah. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, shalosh klipos bebatzel. Rabbi Yehuda explains how onions work. We've always wanted to know. You've always been curious about onions, but you were afraid to ask. Now we're going to find out. There are three layers, three shells around an onion. Panim is the inner layer. Rashi says that's the first white layer. So the first white layer of the onion is called the panimis. Uh, in, in terms of the klipa pnimas, ben shlema ben kedur, whether it's whole or it has a hole in it, and it's not shalem, mitzterefes, it joins with the food. Rashi says, because that itself is food. Once you get to the white layers of the onion, that's what you eat with the rest of the onion. And tzayis, the middle layer, that's, that's a yellow layer. That's sort of the, it looks like the onion, but the color is not the same as the onion. Shlema, if that is whole, it is intact, it's mitzorefis. It joins with the rest of the onion for Tuma and Sahara. If it's Kedura, if it has a hole in it, ain't mitzorefis. It doesn't join with the rest of the onion. Yeah. Chitzona, that's the brown layer, that's like the paper already. Bein kach u bein kach tahura. Whether it is intact or it is not intact, it is tahor, meaning it does not transmit Tuma to or from the rest of the onion, and it does not join with the onion as a Shomer normally would, to give it a shear of kibetza. So if Aisha, who said, can Shomers join together, he's not talking about onion type, where it's layered, like an onion is. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, a Shomer ochel shechilkul kemebayle. He's asking about the Shomer of food that was divided. So for example, you had a walnut, and you split it down the middle, and it's still attached, but the shell is now popped open, and you can see the nut in the middle, or you, you had a piece of meat with the hide on it, and they went ahead and they cut through the hide, or both side, but the meat underneath is still attached, but the hide is now, the hide, which is the shomer, is now in two different sections. So I was just asking about that case, not about layers on top of layers. Kavon, the high lomagi na high. Since one side of this, of this, uh, of this shomer, use the example of the hide, doesn't protect yeah. the other side of the flesh, for high lomagi na high, and vice versa, the other part, when they cut it in two, doesn't protect the other part. So we should say it does not join up. O Dilma, but perhaps, cave unto high magi nadi day, that one part of the shomer is protecting its own piece of food, but high magi nadi day, and the other part of the shomer, which is now divided, is protecting its part of food, mitzdarfin. So these two shomrin, they might join up to get you to the shear of kibetza, and now the food if it can receive and transmit tuma. Not sure. Tashima, come in here. Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah, this is going to sound familiar. Rabbi Azariah, you meant tahir bishalpul. He says the cases of the bean are tahor because you don't need them to protect the large beans. So they're easy to clean and handle. Metame bishal kitnis. Mipnei shirotze bishmishen. But he's metame the, the pea pods for the kitnis, which are very small, because he wants the, those on the kitnis to protect them and keep them clean. Amarevacha bere derava bekucha. So it could be we're talking about the stem holding the pods, not just the pods. Umishim yad. So we're talking about a yad. So it's not necessarily a, a proof that a, an opened uh, uh, klipa, that the shomer is still a shomer if it's into. 
Mabimashmishan, but Tashmishan. And when we talk about handling it, we said you were saying Tashmish is using rather than Mashmesh handling. Tashima, come in here, the Tana de Vebi Shmael. It's also going to sound familiar. Al Kol Zera Zerua Asher Yizarea. So this Pasuk, by seeds becoming Tame, Kiderach Shebne Adam Metzin Lizarea. That the seeds are in the manner that people take them out to plant them. Chita, a wheat seed, Beklipasa, and its bran, Soy Beklipasa, barley, and its bran, Adoshim, Beklipasa, and lentils in their shells. So we see a, a, a lentil in its shell can even have a shomer. So even, even this tiny amount could have a shomer, even if it's divided, it seems it could have a shomer. Kedamarev Acha Berei de Rava. Uh, so he says, talking about the stem holding the, the uh, pods or the shells, Mishum Yad. And it's really, it's being a handle and not a shomer. So I don't have a proof that a shomer that's divided uh, or in two sections is still a shomer. Uh, so we could say we're dealing with bishidra, with the spine. And I'm talk not talking about a human spine. We're talking about wheat seeds or barley seeds. They're, they're these little seeds. If, you, if you've seen a stalk of, of wheat, some, some wild grasses look like this also. They have rows of seeds on a central little stick. And so that central piece in the middle of all those rows of seeds, that's called the shidra. That's the spine that's holding up all of these seeds. So it's the shidra, mishum shomer, and it's protecting them in the sense that it's holding them together and holding the seeds onto the stock. Bishlama uh, and the seeds themselves that we see are going to be a shomer for the other seeds. And the Gemara will tell you how this works. Bishlama elisa. So I understand the upper seeds in this, in this piece of wheat. I should have brought one in if I, if I had one growing. Uh, they need the lower seeds. So the upper ones need the lower ones, Rashi says, because if the lower ones in the stock start to fall out and get loose, then the upper ones are going to follow suit, and they're also going to fall out. But the lower ones, down at the bottom of the shidra, the bottom of this piece of wheat, why would they need the upper ones? So if the upper ones fall out, it shouldn't bother the bottom ones. They should stay there. So bechad dora. So if they're in one row, then it would. So the depending on the species, the wheat has this shidra, this central uh, little stock with all the seeds around it, and there might be three or four rows of seeds surrounding the central stock. So in one row, even if the upper ones fall out, it makes the lower seeds start to get loose. So the upper seeds are working. Not only are they are they fruit, but they're working as a shomer. Rabbi for the lower seeds. If the upper ones fall out, then the lower ones will start to get loose and fall out also. So they're functioning as a shomer for each other. So they're, Baruch Hashem, Hine Matov Manayim, Shevet Achim Gam Yachad, the seeds hold by that Pasuk also. And uh, when they're all together, they're, they're stronger together than they are separately. So that's it's a good... It's like an electrical circuit. If, if you break it, it cuts the rest of it off. I'm not sure how similar it is to electrical circuits, because I try to stick my fingers into electrical circuits. Right. But the, I hear your analogy, right. So in, in the same row, when one seed just starts Someone to get loose and falls out, they all, they all start to fall out. When, when right. You might have this by dandelions also, that, that when they're shalem, they need a big blow. But if they're already falling apart, then the, the wind just is mafazer them, scatters them very quickly. Maybe. So they say, Mi ika kibetza ochlin bechad dora. Rabbi, so we're talking about wheat. So we're talking, you go out to the field, you see wheat, you see barley. And it's, it's nice and big and ripe, but it's not anywhere near a kibetza. A kibetza is the size of an egg. It's the size of two kizaisim. And we even said that their eggs might have been bigger than our eggs. You know, the post game say this by Chola, by the Shia of Chola. Their eggs might have been bigger. And uh, so will we really ever have a kibetza in a stalk of wheat or in one row of wheat seeds? That seems like it would be very, very small. Uh, so they say, yeah, bechite de shimon ben shetach. So the wheat of shimon ben shetach. So it's an amazing story. In the door of Shimon ben Shetach, everything grew extra large. And it's a Simon Bracha of the Tzidkus. He was such a tzaddik, Shimon ben Shetach, that he was metakin his entire generation, that in his day, things grew uh, extra large. And, and then now the fast food places, they heard the story, they call it supersize. So they supersized the food, and that's what they had in Rabbi Shimon ben Shetach. And Rashi brings that the wheat was like kilayos shel shor. So you could have a piece of a, a seed of wheat the size of the kidney of an ox. And I've never had the kidney of an ox, but apparently it's very large because the ox is very large. So in Masechus Tainis, they talk about his, he was such a tzaddik that everything grew, grew larger. And uh, Tayyusva says their adashim also, their adashim of Rabbi Shimon ben Shetach were dinrei zahav, were the size of gold coins. 
and therefore im shomrehen with the with the klipa on their adashim yesh behem kibetza. So apparently these were these were large gold coins. So even a lentil with the klipa, the klipa might get it up to a kibetza. Says says Taisva. So you have a uh, terrific nafkamina that if you have Shimon ben Shetoch sized items, then it would be big enough to be kibetza. Now you're all wondering this that that sounds ridiculous. So we actually had this the. When we went into Eretz Yisrael originally, there was such a bracha that everything was larger. We know this from the Meraglim. They brought back fruit. It wasn't regular fruit. It was supersized fruit. It was humongous. And that bracha was in the fruit for a long time, depending, of course, on the tzidkus of the door. And, you know, if, if people are doing ratzon Hashem, the fruit gets bigger. When we're doing ratzon Hashem, we're going to see bigger peros in our lives. When we're attached to Hashem, attached to Eretz Yisrael, we're doing the ratzon Hashem, we're doing the best we can, the peros we see, maybe not the grapes we buy in Seven Mile, but the peros we see spiritually in our life are going to get bigger. So we have this concept by the chita of Shimon ben Shadach. It was big enough to be a kibetza. Um, good. Hashta de asis lahachi. So now we've come onto Shimon ben Shadach, supersized food. Chadachita nami. So even one grain of wheat could be like the kidney of an ox again. Bechita de Shimon ben Shetach. So it could be a kibetza. It could be a kibetza size even with one wheat if you'd include the husk on it. Gufa. Let's go back to the body of this brysa. This is the famous brysa that I didn't understand yesterday. Shnei samos, two bones, ve'alehen, shnei chatzei And they have two half a zayis of flesh on them or perhaps inside them as marrow. Hichnis rashehen shniim. You put in the other end, the empty end, without the flesh or bayisai, le bayis, into the house or under the tent. The bayis mahil lehem, and the bayis forms an ohel over this part of a corpse, and it brings tumas ohel. So now everything in this bayis is going to be tame if it's not sealed. Ha bayis tame. Yehuda ben Nakusa omer, Mishumar biyakov. Yehuda ben Nakusa says it's not tame. He says, hech shnei atzamos, mitzdarfi in the kazais. How can two different bones? Without the shear of kazais, join up to a kazais. Amar Eish Lakish says, now we're going to learn a very interesting concept. He says, Lo Shadu, they only taught this, Ela Etzim Dahave Yad, only by a bone that's functioning as a yad, as a handle for actual meat. Uh, a vonima, but what about a hair? Lo Havia Yad, so if the meat has a hair, we're going to see where this hair is, Rabbi Say, if the meat has a hair and the hairs are going into the house or into the tent, that's not enough to serve as a yad to bring the tuma into the tent and make an ohel tuma. Rabbi Yochanan the Mar Filu Nima, Rabbi Yochanan says, even a hair. Nami could also uh, have a yad, could also serve as a yad to bring in tuma into the building. Asive, so we're going to ask a kasha, Rabbi Yochanan Reish Lakish. Rabbi Yochanan is a kasha and Reish Lakish. You say a hair is not good as a yad, I'm going to show you it is. Or Shiyesh Alav Kazayis Basar, he has hide that has a Kazayis of Basar. Hanogea Bitsiv. Someone touches um, a, a little sliver of meat coming out of that, even though it doesn't have kazais. Hayotzi memenu, that's coming off of this uh, hide. Uvisara, or on a hair, shekinegdo, that is opposite the, that is on the hide, but opposite the meat itself. Tame, so it's going to be because there's a kazais, and this is a nevela. So nevela is metame with a kazais. My love, mishum yad, isn't this because the hair is serving as a yad, because you could handle this piece of hide and meat through the pulling the hair. Lo, Mishum Shomer, he says, no, the hair is a Shomer. So we just talked about the onions, Rabbi Asai. So Rish Lakish says back, Mi Ika Shomer, Al Gabe Shomer. Is there such thing as a Shomer on top of a Shomer? So what we're assuming is the meat is on the bottom, the hide is on top of the meat, and the hair is on top of the hide. So how can the hair be a Shomer to the meat? Because we know by the onion that a klipa on top of a klipa doesn't count as a Shomer. So Rachel, uh, Rabbi Yochan explains Rachel, it's holy, holy. Now, it doesn't mean holy, holy, not kodesh kochi, but it means there's a hole going through the top of the skin down into the bottom, and really where the hair is growing, the hair follicle itself, the stem cells generating this hair are down at the bottom next to the flesh, next to the basar, and they're growing through a hole in the, in the, in the uh, epidermis and the dermis out to the outside. So really the hair is starting next to the meat, uh, j just like the hide is next to the meat. So he's going to say that the hair can serve as a shomer also for the meat. Moskif la Rav Acha Bar Yaakov. So Rav Acha Bar Yaakov has a, has a gewaldige shayla on this. 
Elameata, but from net from here, if you're gonna tell me the, the hair is going through the hide, Tefillin Chehi Kosvina, and how do we write Tefillin? So you're saying, what does this have to do with Tuva and Tzahir? How do we write Tefillin on this hide? We write Tefillin on the hide of the animal. If the hide of the animal has all of these holes in it from the hairs going through the hide, how do we write the Tefillin on that? Baha Be'inan Kesiva Tama. Tefillin requires Kesiva Tama, perfect script, meaning no breaks in the letters, no holes in the letters. Rashi says the drasha is, of course, the famous word we're about to say in about 20 minutes, Uch Tav Tam. Uch tav tam al mizizoy speisecho vishirecha shehei kesiva tama ktav tam. So you can't have any holes in your letters. If there's all these holes in the height of the animal, so the ink is going to fall into the hole, and you're going to have a little hole in the letters when you write your tefillin. So you're going to have a problem if the if the height is ho- has the holes to let the hairs through. So he says beinik kesiva tama vileka so he had forgotten, it slipped his mind, what they say in the West, which is in Eretz Yisrael. What do they say about writing tefillin? Kol nekev, shidio over alav, any hole that the ink just goes over it, ain't no nekev. It's not a hole to bother the din of tefillin. You see this when they're paving the road. Sometimes there's a hole in the road and they try to put in a patch, but it just sinks down in the hole again. And sometimes there's a little hole, it's very small, and they just put some asphalt on top and it seals it up very nicely, and it, 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 it's all right. So he's saying, if the hole is so small that the, the, the ink won't get sucked in, then it's, it's not a hole. So basically what's going on is they, what do they use to write this filament on is the cloth, and the cloth is the dermis, is the outer layer. And so if we're saying that the hairs start growing, the follicles start growing in the lower layer of skin next to the basar, so there's going to be holes on both sides of the outer layer of skin. Uh, the Shulchan Aruch Paskins, we write the tefillin on the inner side facing the animal of the outer layer of skin. So the, the hole, there would certainly be holes there from the hairs. They'd be very tiny holes, probably. Um, so we're saying that that's what the Matthias would be. There would be holes, but they're not going to be a problem if they're so small that the ink is not going to get sucked in there and make a hole in the letter. All, all of the letters in the tefillin are holy, but we don't want holes in the letters. Ibai same, or he could say, Kula Mishum Yad that we're talking about a yad, could, uh, that the hair is serving as a yad, not necessarily as a shomer. Kedama Rabbi Elah. Rabbi Elah talks about hairs, bimlai, the really sort of uh, bristles, shebein uh, hamalayim, that are among the melayim. And we're talking about, like we said, on the, the wheat, with the seeds of wheat come in these rows, and every seed of wheat has this sort of bristle sticking out the top. And it kind of looks like a, like a paintbrush or something. It has all these bristles coming up and out of all of in each individual seed. So just one of these alone, you couldn't really carry the wheat and pick the wheat stuck up with one of them. They're too small. But if you have all of them, a miloi bena malayim, you have all these malayim, you have 10 of them, Rabbi Isai, you could pick up that whole stock of wheat and use it as a yad. So hachanami benima shebein hanimin. So now it's a hair among the hairs. Just one hair is not a yad to pull this piece of meat around. But now if you've got 10 or 20 of them, Rabbi Isai, you could pull the meat around by these hairs. So you could pull it by the hair, and therefore even one hair could serve as a yad, because altogether they're a yad. So that one hair into the tent could make bring the tuma into the tent. Hecha in Mar Rabbi Law, where did Rabbi Law say this? Aha. He says he says this about the the wheat. He says, Milai Shibishibolim, these bristles coming out of the wheat that are on these on these shibolim, on these um, these ears of grain. Mitamin uh, umitamin. They they become tame and they give off tuma. Ve'ena mitstarfin, but they don't join with the wheat for this shear of kibetza. Miloi lemai chaze. What can you do with one bristle from the wheat? Amar Rav Elaw. Now it's funny. They call him Rav Eloi. They called him Rav Elaw, and now that he's talking about Milai, they call him Rav Eloi. So I wonder if that's uh, they did that on purpose to remember the din better. He says b'miloi shabena miloim. So one hair could be a yod if it's among many, many bristles, many hairs. You could, with their strength, combined strength, you could handle the wheat. So you could use it as a yod. There's another version. He says, This sounds good. That it could be a shomer. If you're going to say a hair is a yod to pull on the meat, what can you do with one hair? You can't pull the piece of food around. Like Rabbi Law says, with one bristle among many bristles <coughs> sticking out of your ear of wheat. So even one hair, if you have a lot of hairs there, could serve as yad. 
Hechi in Madurab did. Even one would actually. Yes, okay. even one would bring Tuma because used together they are a Yad. Hechi in Madurab, the Rabbi Eloi, where did Rabbi Eloi say this? Aha, it's non, we just had this. Milai Shebishi Balim, these bristles sticking out of the ear of wheat. Mitamin u mitamin ve'en mitstarfin. They can bring, they can give and take tuma, but they don't join with the wheat for the requisite shear. Miloi lemai chazi. What can you do with one bristle? Amar Rebbe Rebbe Eloi b'miloi shebein hamiloyim. So one bristle among many, you can use many bristles together. The ikad demasne la amasnisin. And some people teach this on our Mishnah Rabbozai. Back to our Mishnah, top of Kuvches. Amasnisin haor verotiv akipa. Remember the things that are come with the meat, the skin and the bones and the, the flakes that fall off. Uh, they're not meat themselves, but they're cooked in the same pot, served on the same plate with the meat. They join up to get the shear of kibetza for tuma. Mitzdarfin latame tumas ochlin. They will join up with it to get the shear. Amar e shloki shlo shano ele etzim. Only a bone to have a shomer. That could be a shomer for the meat inside. Of onima, but the hairs, lo have a shomer. They can't be a shomer. Rabbi Yochanan amar filu nima Nami Havi Shomer. Hairs can be a Shomer. So we saw this again. This is this will be quick. Amar Le Reish Lokesh Rabbi Yochanan, Mi Ika Shomer Al Gabe Shomer. Can there be Shomer on a Shomer? Can the hairs on top of the hide serve as a Shomer? Hilchuli Michalchel. The hairs are going through holes in the outer layer of skin and they're down in the, they really grow from the lower layer. Maski, Vla Rev Acha Elameata, Tefil and Heikh Kasvinan. So he had the problem again. If there's holes in the cloth, how do we write Tefillin on it? We need a perfect letters without holes. Veleka, uh, we wouldn't have it if we have all these hair, holes from the hair follicles. He had forgotten what they say in over alav when the ink go, just goes over the hole and doesn't fall in. Eino um, nekev. We could finish. This. We'll, we'll leave it here for now, even though it's a continuation. I'm going to give you one little tidbit about Abria. Now, Bria is Eina Betela, and we have another Shaila. There's a Tosfos in Ketzad Mevarchin, and it's a famous Tosfos. If it's not famous, we're about to make it famous. So in Ketzad Mevarchin, he says that you need a shear for bracha. So, so Tosfos says you don't need a shear for the bracha Rishona. That's logical. You can't enjoy from the world without a bracha. But we're talking about the after bracha requires a shear, requires a requisite amount, a kazayas, to say your after bracha. But he brings the Yerushalmi, Rabbi Yochanan ate a grape and said an after bracha. And a grape was not a kezayis. Uh, we're not talking about a humongous grape of Shimon ben Shetach. We're talking about a stam, a grape. doesn't have a kezayis in it. So he says, so we must not poskin like the Yerushalmi. The problem is he brings Rabbi Yosef, one of the Bali Tosfos, says there's no machlokis Yerushalmi bavli. When the Yerushalmi says he makes an afterbracha on one grape, that's because it's a birya. It's a bria, and it's chashuv because it's one unit. So therefore, he says, it's not a machlokis that the Gemara Bavli says, oh, he didn't eat a shear, so he doesn't make a bracha. That's talking about raisins or grapes that had the seeds removed, that they're not shalem. They're not an entire grape as it was created anymore. It's nish to grape if you took out the seeds, if you made it a raisin. But in, in the Yerushalmi, he ate a normal, full grape with the seeds. So he said an after bracha, even though he wasn't a kezayis. So the Taisvah is a little misupak, and the Shulchan Aruch brings this so you thought there was no halacha lemaisa today. So here we are about the bria. He says, "Ha'ochel pachos mi kezayis, bein mi pas, bein mi shar ochlin." He did not eat a kezayis. Shoti pachos mi revius, mevarech tachila bracha reuila osemen. You have to make the first bracha. La acharav enu mevarech klal doesn't make an after bracha if he did not get eat a kezayis or drink a revius. V'yesh mistapkim, but there's a suffix. Lomar sha'al davar shahu kibriyaso, a birya, a birya, kigon, gargir shal anav, one single grape, o shal rimon, or one seed from a pomegranate, shemavarchi nacharav. So some people say that's the Tosfos bringing that Yerushalmi, that you do make an afterbracha on a birya, on one grape. Afal pisha ain't bukazayis, even though it's not the shear of kazayis. Lechach, therefore, nachon. It is proper to be careful. Don't ever eat one grape less than a kezayis. So this is the source for the halacha of you can't eat just one. So now they use that for potato chips. The potato chips are not a bria, so there, there's no din if you can't eat just one. But the potato chip companies, they, they learned up this shulchan arach and this tosos, or somebody told them about it, l'chaira, because now they say you can't eat just one applies to potato chips. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. And it's, it's worth coming just for the continuation. He says at the end, he says, if you're, um, 
he says, what if you're drinking wine? He says, imivarchin oso al kazayis. He says, well, there's a suffix about a kazayis of wine, which is less than a revius. He says, l'kach tov l'zacher shlo yishtos pachos me kazayis. Oh, revius. He says, if you're drinking wine, don't just have a sip. Have a whole cup of wine. So Rabbi Silver definitely holds by this halacha. <laughs> it's a gewaldic halacha. It's worth coming to the daf yomi just to hear that halacha. Have some wine. Well, why is that by the, by the, by the wine? The revius and the... So, Kazayus is a dry measure.